Very good. To... Good morning. Let me uh, introduce myself. I'm Juan Pedro, uh, Technical Director of Innovation at Monolithic. And I've been tasked to talk to you about edge computing. You have already heard the term. It was introduced Jordi in his presentation. And I'm going to give a review of a little about uh, what the definition of edge computing is and how from monolithic. And in my case, we try to tackle it in the end-to-end -end projects. Uh, computing as a definition is what allows process the data as close to where they were created instead of sending them over the network and processing everything in the cloud. The analysis of the results is done on site and, uh, and we put aside the cloud a bit for several reasons. To make it much clearer what desk computing means, let me give you an example. The example is very basic. We have surveillance cameras, all of them before. Uh, until recently, very little, they all focused broadcast video all day and concentrated on a recorder. And the recorder was sending, at a certain point, all the videos towards the cloud or in one direction, where the video was processed there and selected the videos where there had been movement. So that video stays recorded and registered. What happens now? Uh, Enabled by edge computing, we make, we make smart cameras. What do these allow? Only send when the camera itself detects that movement. It will be the difference a bit from the paradigm shift and one of the advantages that becomes evident in optimization. Of the data and resources, the advantages that edge computing presents, necessarily, they are basically the response times it improves the response, the latency is lower, we can make real-time applications. It reduces bandwidth usage. It's true to, uh, that 5G is coming now, etc., etc. but that would be a low optimization of the 5G resource. Privacy and security. Uh, keeps personal data in the thing itself. You only send certain data, i.e. you do not send all the data to the cloud, and it allows you to process data in lower layers. And e in the end, the less data you carry, the less vulnerable. Reduces server load by using the data. It offers new functionalities. Mm -hmm. And it increases the reliability of the system and energy consumption. Nowadays, the challenges that Anube proposes to us are like insufficient bandwidth within this new paradigm of the Internet of Things, where we're going to send a ton of data to the cloud, right? So bandwidth may be insufficient, intermittent connectivity can fail. The, the latency, you know, if you send all the data as raw data to the cloud and process it in the cloud, you have some latency. Data security delay in reading the situation. In other words, in the end, you have this latency and the delay in action because you also have to process and then send the action. The agile respond to these challenges posed by the cloud. Hmm. Well, by reducing and optimizing the amount of data sent to the cloud, it doesn't rely on connectivity to provide the service itself. It has low latency, real time, less than 10 milliseconds, minutes, depending on the applications. The data stays at the source that generates it. You don't send all the data upwards, meaning providing security. The decision making is close and enables, uh, well, an instant action. Let me give you an example. If we had to put a sensor in a machine that cuts wood and it detects that, well, that uh, a lack of security someone is uh, raising is to imagine if the decision to stop the machine were in the cloud. It's best if it's right where it's being detected. This would be a somewhat more movement example. Uh, so it is true that it brings many advantages, but also challenges the ex-computer. Only the replicability of data, we generate a lot of data, and it's necessary to see when and how it's generated. Within this, we have a storage limitation because in the end, they are real devices. Analytical models are created in one place. There's a place where this knowledge and decisions, this data analysis is generated. But you must run it in various places. Does they make the management of the solution itself complex? And the edge device in the end ends up relying on communication networks and infrastructure. Another thing, another challenge posed by X-Computing 
is the definition and design of the solution, which is very complex. This is what I do at Monolithic. I am ultimately the one who decides, who defines the design of the solution. And I'm going to give you about uh, four tips that I use when defining and to post certain dimensions when deciding on certain things. Hardware and where I propose the edge, that is the border between the cloud and the edge. Firstly, as Jordi also pointed out in his, it is in his presentation, it's the difference between data, information, and knowledge. A lot of data in the cloud or anywhere, but in the end, if it's not processed, it's not information. If it's not displayed, it's not information. And if it's not treated, it's not knowledge. So in this paradigm, we try to place the solution trying to answer what the company ultimately needs. They have to make strategic decisions and use the knowledge generated, and at the end, it's the people. This is a typical Italian architecture, Internet of Things, an ecosystem where we see at the bottom all the sensors, actuators, let's say all the things, and an edge zone where we can do the real-time processing here. Mm. Real-time processing, uh, things much faster that need much quicker interaction. Then we have the cloud, where we can do other types of analysis. Uh, this would be an area where we work and where we have to make decisions where, when considering whether the decision should be in real-time or being in the future. So we have two things, actions and analysis. If the analysis is descriptive, the descriptive analysis is what is happening at that moment. The machine is off. That's the descriptive analysis. And if you have to take an action, you have to react, let's say, create a relay. That would be very much in the edge zone. It would be right next to the sensor. If we, if we go upstairs, it would be prescriptive analysis. Huh? This is what, uh, after having done a diagnostic analysis, and at the end, the prescriptive one, is what allows you to evaluate what decision you have to take in the future in case something specific happens. That's why if, it, uh, if many of these things happen, in the end, you have to plan to do another. So uh, diagnostic analysis is when you already have a history of what's happening the prescriptive is what's currently running. The diagnostic is when you can see a history and say that if it had been turned off for five hours, I have a problem. The predictive one is uh, seeing that there's a diagnosis and I can move forward depending on how the thing is reacting. What for? I can predict the situation's uh, status. That would be somewhat the predictive analysis. And the prescriptive is a bit, uh, well, assess what to do. It depends, in other words, doing a bit what to, should we do in this situation? That's all. Works more in the area of what could be happening and the perspective is what we could do. All of this allows me to place algorithms, processing, machine learning uh, in certain areas for certain situations. This would be somewhat the map or the canvas that I use. I used to decide depending on the things in the design of my solution where um, I'm proposing actions on the left side and the analysis on the right side. And all of this assembled within the architecture of the technology. Well, uh, the selection of hardware and software, I'm going to focus more on the hardware part. It's our strength. I have some, uh, some premises. Uh, I usually use it. It must be compact and robust in design. We use our own tested operating system, which allows us, at all times, knowing that the state of our sensor is going to be as robust as possible. It must be safe and private. We strive. Uh, we need to be very clear that the things, the getaways, all the technology we use, we need to, as much as possible, we have to enable remote administration that can be monitored and controlled. Modularity is extremely important. To be able to replace their systems and make everything modular, and above all, the over-the-air upgrade, that is being able to update the system during setup. In progress, interoperability. We must control various communication protocols, and among them, communicate and focus. And that of all, 
when choosing the hardware, we have to have this compromise between consumption and computing power. On the subject of software, I have put uh, a lot of software that we are handling and that is handled in the industry and that new ones appear. And in the end, it also depends on from our partners, what they use and what we are using. This is closely linked directly to the requirements of, of the solution itself. Uh, so uh, this is what I wanted to show you a bit of what, I, what am I fighting for in Monolith, which is to have a complex solution where we have to put from things at the base. We need to move to the cloud, and the path we are on is where we need to put the edge computing or what we process at what time. And this will be a bit to, uh, well, share with you my experience in the design. Some examples of computing which we can even see operational in the market today. The system, this system recognizes, the machine recognizes if the operator is wearing the appropriate protection. If he does not do it, the machine is not activated. Yeah, obviously here in the analysis and action, it's clear. We can't take this to the cloud. We can't operate the machine in case it takes us. Therefore, Tessy, this is very in edge computing and the action has to be taken immediately. It reaches real time. We have, you have seen this many times, the reading of plates in, in the parking lot. It has to be in this computing. That is, if this visual processing is done on the edge itself, the facial recognition for to sign up in companies and so on, and then procedures that are too much. Manufacturing, what they do is it depends on the processing. What the machine itself has to do is more based on the fact close to, in this case, to the robot or in the cloud. Mm. Agree? And this was a bit um, the walk through the computing loss that it creates 